Sony is the demonic offspring of a night gone wrong when Satan met Jane from Tarzan. Tarzan and Jane. They had sex. Don't get me wrong here, there's not a camera I prefer more than the Sony A7S III Love Horror that I have filming me right now. It's fantastic. I love it. But there are quirks. We realize it's the perfect camera on paper, but problems arise. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Sony A7S III with the 20mm 1.8 at Tony 2 for some reason, as if I'm more dignified using it. And behind me exists furry creatures of the night. Sony, focus on him. If I tap. And you track, and I disappear. A little demon baby resides behind me. Tracking canceled. Sony re-engaging. Unbelievable. So I love this camera so much for a couple reasons. The wide angle lenses, there's so many of them and more on the way. That 16mm 1.8, I'm excited. I want to try it. The wider the better. I want a 14mm 1.8, but it has to be light, not the Sigma. That thing's 1100 grams. So is my dead grandmother. I love it because I can just press record and I know what's going to get me. I don't have to think about it. I can move around. In that little filmmaker's skit, I was like in a wig and glasses and I'm moving around all the time. It didn't lose me once. There's the odd time it, this lens focus breathes. Sorry, kitty. It almost 100% comes down to the autofocus being fun and reliable, and that's why I love this so much, and partly it's because of my past Panasonic tortured life that I lived for so long, not really being able to use it. You could. I mean, I got away with the GH5S for a long time. Like, you're, there's pulsing in the background, but you get by with it, and the G9, I use it sometimes. That plus the fact that the slow motion 240 frames per second still has the amazing autofocus, never loses you. Stabilization works with wide lenses pretty good. It's a phenomenal piece of machinery. But the strange thing, its biggest strengths are its main weaknesses. Nobody first saw this coming. So my first note here, the low light, it's one of the worst. I've seen. Uh, hear me out. I know you've seen. Oh, look, I'm at 109,000. I saw you. It looks like daylight in the. D Shut your mom's ass. Yes, you can get some impressive looking footage in the sense that you can be in a dark room and it looks like sun's beaming at you at midnight. It's like, oh, how did that? It's not very clean looking though. And here's where my problems lie. When I'm just filming videos in here without this light on, bad things happen to good people. I was making a video with my little kitty here. If you want to see it, it's on my other channel. She's a Maine Coon. And so I'm in a low light scenario and there's banding and noise like you wouldn't believe. Like I've never seen this. I've owned Panasonic cameras for years, filming indoors with no light. I've never seen that. And now I understand it. I understand Panasonic's stance. They're like, oh, we do contrast detect so we don't see that. We care about you. They do care. Sure, you could not have focus on a clown in a circus, but I love you. So the reality is what I want from a camera is to be in auto mode. I just choose the tone and then you do everything else and we should be good. But if you do that on this camera, there's moments where the auto ISO will teeter totter on the brink of that noise reduction zone at 12,800. So it, it's just like super noisy and then cleans up and it's showing in the video and it's going back and forth between it and the banding there's lines of noise and it's so noisy i couldn't believe it and the slow motion this is user error i know i should have way more lights on you want to do 240 frames per second in a dark room with like a cloudy rainy days window light coming in that's not sufficient it's not going to do it but like, I can't believe how noisy the footage is. <laughs> like it's, it's unusable professionally. I upload it because I'm, my standards are not even close to enough. Now that leads me to the auto exposure being just, I'm very dark now. There's times where it performs like this is good. 
That's good. It's very bright there. The dynamic range. It's like, look at that. I'm still in focus. I mean, in exposure with that super brightness behind me. Wow. How are you doing it? But it doesn't always do this. Oh, oh, you're so cute. How are you doing that? How do you do it? You're a main coat. Oh, Sony almost put a tracking box. I can't tell if you're even in focus. I'll tap you. Oh, now it's tracking. You're within the minimal focus distance. That's not how you say that. So there's times where you're super dark. There's no like face priority exposure, even though it's on in the menu. Face priority in multimeter mode, it's checked. It doesn't do anything. And the auto exposure, there's often like flashes, flashbacks to your acid trips when you were 13. Why did you start so young? It's just like the sky is flashing like a smartphone. Like I don't understand it. What the hell? That's $70,000 camera. And it's like, like it's insane. I noticed that in the pre-production unit when I was testing it, I was like, no way they'll let that into the final version. And it's still there. And I see it in other people's videos. And I don't know if it's auto exposed because some of the people I watch, they never auto expose. You know they're twisting that ND filter. And still the sky's flashing. There's something wrong, really wrong. The next area where you might notice a problem, the autofocus, it very much matters the settings. You can have bad settings on a Sony camera. If you go super responsive, it's like constantly hunting and you will see that pulse. It's a Panasonic pulse. So you gotta slow it down. I think we're okay lately. But I've had like several videos where it's like, that's not right. The Panasonic S5 versus this video, there was a couple moments where I was like, what the hell is that doing? Like the Sony was worse. So you do need to dial it in. And you could have problems if you don't know what you're doing like me. The next thing you might not love about this camera is the color science. I don't mind it. Whenever I make a video and I get it back, I just slap a Sony LED on there. I'm like, not bad, it looks good. And then I compare it to another camera side by side. I'm like, oh, oh, I see it now. That's, yeah, this does look bad. But on its own, here's how you do it. Now you could theoretically do a cine match to a Canon profile. How are you doing? I'll test this more in depth. I was sent it. I was sent the program and it's in the right hands. That's for sure. That is for sure. Canon colors, nothing went wrong. So I'll test it outside. We'll do a bunch of different profiles, but apparently you can switch any camera to another camera. Turn Sony into Fuji color, couple button presses. So did that improve right now, Canon? Wow. No? Color science is hard to get right unless you're Olympus and you just know better. How do you do it? Like, did you notice like right away? Oh, that's a proper white balance. Even though I custom white balanced it. We're on the same, I think. Don't quote me on that. Look at us. I don't know what it is about Sony. I think it's because they're reptilians and they have green scaly skin. They don't recognize a human being. It's like, what is it yellow or like a pink? Like they don't understand blood and skin. Make me beautiful Sonic. Something's just off with the color and the auto white balance is always a little too warm whenever I use it. Dare I dream display that to you right now. This is custom 4,900 Kelvins auto. Looks like it didn't change. It's perfect in every way. I love it. I just noticed in the side by side comparison, Sony's always a little warmer. And I think that's why I prefer the Fuji. I love Fuji. I got a couple comments saying like, Oh, never use Fuji auto. Are you kidding me? That's the best feature in the camera. I noticed it right away going from G85, which was always just orange. And then this is like perfect. I'm stopping down the Tonia chair to full effect. Did you see it? I saw it. Now here's a couple annoying occurrences. If you use the custom profiles, C1, C2, you cannot do a custom white balance like I was using right now because I'm in movie mode, the hobo mode on the dial. 
so I can't just save my settings. What the hell is that? You have to get out of there. I don't even know how to do it. I can do it in the movie mode, but how would I get that custom white balance into my custom mode? I don't even know how to do it. Like, that's so stupid. It's like, no, you can't do that, sorry. Why? Also, you can't change from aperture priority to manual, which I do often. Like, sometimes I just want it to do everything. Right now, we're in aperture priority. Sometimes I want, okay, I'm gonna try to expose myself in here. It never works right, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. The only reason I use my custom modes now are just for the slow motion. C2 and C3 are 240 frames and 120p in 4K. So those are my two, and I don't seem to need to change the settings much on those. It's just a street crossing or a cat leaping. Another annoying thing, there's no delete all button. Am I missing it? In Fuji, I have a bunch of files. I offload them, and then I can delete them on the computer, but Sony's doesn't let you do that through the USB. That's fun. And so I have to unplug and then delete delete every single file. Don't you dare tell me that I can reformat the card. I understand that. That's a whole separate thing. You dive into the menu a bit more and it takes time. It's a good 10 seconds. Isn't that stupid though? If you took hundreds of photos, you can only delete one at a time. Like that's the dumbest thing. It's like DOS, MS DOS bullshit. Honestly, it's still my favorite camera because of the usability of everything. Just the trustworthy autofocus, the stabilization good enough if you're slow and not like actually walking fast somewhere. Don't be late for anything and think you're filming a vlog on the way. You can get some serious magic with this beast, but there's just so many times I just switch to a lowly G9 with the Lawa and it's like, oh, that looks so much better. Why? <laughs> like a lot better. Thousands more. I would... I was gonna say heavier, but it's that's a lie. You're fat, panty boy, you know it. This could be my daily driver, as long as you don't move too fast on that. Still, despite all its flaws, it's still my favorite camera, just for the ease of use. And the look is good, when it does it right. And then when it doesn't, it's comical at least, on how bad it does. The banding and the noise, the underexposure, I don't mind it, the yellow skin tones. Sign me up for that. In fact, we'll finish off with the Olympus just to see, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, I remember that image. Better colors. Although, harsher highlight, dignity. The roll off is not there. It's not in your heart. It scares me. And that's why it's like, Sony, yeah, you got it. Even though your color's strange, strange in the face. Why do you do it? I have battled the Sony a7S III versus many cheaper cameras. And in every single one, there's a good chunk of people who prefer the cheaper one. Probably because their hobo hearts can't even reach beyond their mind limits. And they own the cheaper camera. It's like, oh yeah, I prefer that one. You don't, yeah, you prefer pooing on yourself. I get it. So it's not a super long list of flaws. There's just a couple minor nitpicks, a couple deal breaking flaws. It's just the banding and the noise. Like what you would think is Sony's strength, the low light. And then you get in at low light. Are you doing it right now? What if I was to turn off a light? No lights. Oh boy, the Olympus. You did not handle that. I think it's in manual. Are you seeing it? 10,000 ISO. Oh, if it would have just crept up and it would bounce between, oh, it, it's doing it, kind of. Are you seeing the banding? Is it here? Is it super noisy? It's just a nightmare sometimes. I'll just ramp up the ISO manually so you can see it. Right here, it's gonna switch to clean. But auto ISO, like it's back and forth between it and you get this just unprofessional piece of bullshit image. It hurts my face. So to end the video, we're in 409,000 ISO in aperture priority. So that's a 2500th of a shutter and this is art. Still autofocuses. It's basically pitch black. It's raining outside. There's barely light coming from that window. So I'm gonna leave. What do you think? Are there other flaws to the Sony system that you've noticed? Stabilization's a little jerky at times, for sure. But it's good enough for full frame. 
It's one of the better ones. Not quite. Panasonic beats it. So does Nikon. Canon doesn't. You wobbly bitch. I'm gonna leave. Thanks for buying a camera conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribe for more now, Sally.